Welcome, my name is Jeff Bartles. I'm an infrastructure technical specialist here at Autodesk, and today I'm joined by my colleagues Jerry Bartles and Dana Judge. In today's 30-minute workout session, we are going to be exploring Civil 3D's transparent commands. If you're unfamiliar with the 30-minute workout concept, I'm sure you'll agree that if you've ever taken a Civil 3D course in the past, there's never enough time during a typical training session to cover everything that Civil 3D can do. Usually the courses focus on the need to know functionality. What do you need to know in order to do your job? Then the remaining tools and workflows and features are the type of things that you just have to pick up on your own over a lifetime using the application. We put together these 30 minute workouts as a means of providing a resource to help fill in some of those gaps and help Civil 3D users make the most of their Autodesk investment. We do have some ground rules during these sessions, one of which many of the examples we show are going to be abstract in nature. We do that so that we can focus on how a tool functions. Once you understand how the tool works, you can apply it in whatever situation works best for you. Since we're only together for 30 minutes, we are always going to start on time and end on time. These sessions are recorded. Anybody who registered for the event will get access to a recording later, so don't worry about having to take a bunch of notes during the session. If you have questions, go ahead and put those in the Q&A pane. Jerry and Dana will be fielding those as we go. Any questions that remain unanswered at the end of the session, we will make sure and get back to you with an answer. And if you'd like to have a follow-up one-on-one call with one of us, go ahead and put that in the Q&A pane as well. We always enjoy speaking with other users. So our agenda today, we're going to be talking about Civil 3D's transparent commands. We'll start by kind of defining the transparent command and talking about a little bit of its history. We'll look at where we can find them in the interface, and then we'll look at how we can use them in some practical examples to snap to locations relative to coordinate system, point objects, alignment objects, and profile views. Now, the transparent tools got a facelift in 2019.2, so towards the end of the session, I'm going to show you some of the new functionality that was added. For the most part, everything that I show you during this session will work regardless of the version of Civil 3D that you're using. And then at the very end of the session, I will show you where you can get more information about this feature. As always, this is going to be a PowerPoint-free zone. We're going to be working live in the application for the duration of our time together today. Okay, housekeeping is done. As you can see, I'm here in Civil 3D 2021. And as I mentioned, everything that I show you today is going to work regardless of the version of Civil 3D you're in. A couple things that I show you will be specific to the newer versions of Civil 3D, but I will mention that when we get to it. We're going to start out by talking a little bit about transparent commands. Transparent commands have been in the AutoCAD platform for a while. Essentially, a transparent command is a command that runs within another command. The geometric calculator is a good example of this. We actually talked about this a couple weeks ago. Let's use that as an example. Maybe I would like to fillet these two lines with a radius that matches this circle. I'm going to come up and launch the fillet command, and then I will come down and click radius. Now it's asking me for the radius. I don't know what that is. So I'm going to type apostrophe C-A-L. You can see that down at the command line. I am launching the calculator transparently within the fillet command. Once the calculator is running, it's asking me for an expression. And if you remember from a couple weeks ago, I can use the rad expression. I'll just type R-A-D and press enter. I can then select this circle to extract the radius. And then I can choose my first line and my second line to create a fillet. So transparent command is a command that runs within another command. It adds functionality to that command or any command, really. Civil 3D includes more than 20 transparent commands. They can be found here on the right side of the screen in this toolbar. In the event you're not seeing the toolbar, it could be that it was turned off. We can turn it back on by going to the View ribbon tab, and I'll come down to the toolbars here, and we'll expand this. I'll come down to Civil. You want to make sure that the Transparent Commands toolbar is toggled on right here. At the risk of destroying the end of the movie, the majority of these Transparent Commands work a lot like object snaps. They allow us to snap to locations relative to our Civil objects or the coordinate system. Let's take a look at some of them. I'm going to pan the drawing over. Here I have some geometry that represents maybe part of a property boundary. I would like to recreate this line work. I'm going to go to the Home tab, and I'm going to create this using the polyline. I will then click on Screen, and you can see I'm in the traditional polyline command. Now while these options are nice, it would be really nice if in this command I was being asked for a bearing and distance. That's what I would need to create this line segment. Well, fortunately there's a transparent command that will do that. If I come over here to the toolbar, this one's second down, represents bearing distance. If I hover, you can get a little more information about that command. Look in the lower left corner. 
you can see apostrophe BD. Essentially, that it's typing that in, just like we did apostrophe CAL. It works the same way. I'm going to click to access that command. And now, within Polyline, I can choose a quadrant. I'm just going to click on screen to select quadrant 1, since we're in the northeast. And then my bearing is going to be 65.3535. That's how we enter bearings in the Civil 3D platform. The decimal represents degrees. Finally, I'll enter the length of the line. I'll type 125 and press Enter. So that line's been replicated. Notice that I'm still in the transparent command. This is nice because I can do the next line. Let me go ahead and click in quadrant two. And my bearing for this line is going to be 50.4515. And then my distance will be 80. I'll press Enter. Notice I'm still in the command. I could do another segment if I want. If I press the Escape key, it will cancel out of the current transparent command and return me to the command I started with, which in this case is polyline. If we look over here at the transparent command menu, you can see that we can also draw to angle distance, azimuth distance, and deflection distance. These can be very helpful if you're trying to snap to locations, if you're creating survey geometry. There's also an option to draw to northern easting. You can see I'm in the polyline command here. Maybe I'd like to draw to this northern easting coordinate. I'll come over to the transparent command right here. I'll click northern easting. And you can see now it's asking me, what's your northern? I'll type 4800 and press enter. What's your easting? I'll type 3800 and press enter. And I remain in the transparent command. It's looking for another northern easting pair. I'm going to press escape at this point to return to the polyline command. Maybe I would like to draw to a Kogo point now. Maybe one represents a control point. We'll say it's point number two, which exists down here. You can see it's kind of buried in this pile of points. Wouldn't it be nice if I could use the polyline and draw to a point based on its number? Well, we can do that using the transparent command. Let me come over here. There's one that allows me to snap to a specific point based on its number. I'll click that, and now it's asking me what point number do you want to snap to. I'll type 2 and press Enter. It takes me right to that point. I can then enter additional point numbers if I want to, or if I press Escape, I can cancel out of the transparent command. Escape again takes me out of the polyline command. So very quickly I was able to create that geometry and snap to accurate locations using the transparent command set. Now let's validate some of these. I'm going to go to Annotate. That's what we're all about here, Trust But Verify. I'm going to put a label on these first two segments just to show you that the bearings and distances match. So we were able to create that geometry, go to a coordinate, and then go to a point number. I show you that so I can show you this. If you've ever used the line command in Civil 3D, you probably noticed that it has an extensive menu with a lot of options. If you look closely, you can see that a lot of these options match the tools that we have over here in the transparent commands toolbar. You see, Civil 3D is the evolution of an application called Land Desktop. And in Land Desktop, we had a really nice menu under the line tool that gave us all of these additional options. And the development team, when they started working on Civil 3D, thought, well, you know, these tools are fantastic. The only drawback is it kind of locks us into using line. If we were to pull these tools out and put them in a separate toolbar, we could leverage those tools using any command. Line, polyline, feature line, we could use it to draw parcels, we could use it to edit geometry or query geometry just by taking them out of the line command. So the original versions of Civil 3D back in the early 2000s didn't have that menu because it really wasn't necessary. You could grab those additional tools over here. So you may be asking yourself, why do we have this menu now? Well, back in the early 2000s, as people from Land Desktop migrated to Civil 3D, they liked the original menu, and they said, you know what, we would really appreciate it if you could put a similar menu in Civil 3D. So that's why it's here. It's really redundant. It's just another way to access the same functionality. In fact, if I hover, you can see that's all it's doing is it's typing in that transparent command for us. Let me pan this over. We'll look at another option. Let's say that we're working on a drawing, we've got a surface, and maybe we ask the survey team to go out and capture just a handful of points representing the bottom of a slope. We can see these points here. We can see that the points were captured consecutively. We can see they're in 3D space. I would like to connect these points with a feature line such that I could use that as maybe a break line for my surface. I'm going to come up and launch the feature line command, create feature line. I'm going to keep the defaults here and I'll click OK. And then I'm going to use that same transparent command we saw earlier that allows me to draw based on point number. 
I'll choose point number and then it's asking me what point number do you want to start with? I'll type five and press enter. You can see it's acquired the elevation of that point. Let me press enter. Now it's asking for the next point number. I don't have to type the numbers in one at a time. I can enter a range if I want to. I'll type six dash nine. Six through nine is what that represents. I will then press enter and you can see it takes me right to the next point. It is acquiring the elevation of that point, and as fast as I tap the Enter key, I can work my way down to the end of the line. When I'm finished, I'll press Escape to cancel out of the transparent command, and Escape again to get out of the feature line command. Let's look at another example. Maybe the environmental team went out and captured some points representing a wetland boundary. We can see I've got a handful of points here. I'd like to connect these dots. And these don't have elevation. They're essentially planar. I'm just using this to establish a boundary. I'm going to use the polyline command in this case. Now these points are not consecutively numbered. Let's look at another way that we can snap to these points. You know, typically if I launch the polyline command, we might go from point to point by using the node object snap. Nothing wrong with that. Although if we are backed up trying to click some of these, we may on occasion you can miss the point and not notice it. There is an easier way. If I come over to the transparent commands, I'm going to use this one here called point object. Now I don't have to use that node object snap. You can see as long as I click on the point or the label, I can snap right to that location. When I'm finished, I'll press escape to get out of the transparent command. I'll press escape again to exit the polyline command. So just another option, a ways for us to snap to point objects. Let me drag this over. Using the transparent commands, I can also create geometry or snap to locations that are adjacent to an alignment. For instance, maybe I'd like to create some geometry adjacent to this alignment. Maybe I'd like to create a, some kind of linear segment that starts at station zero with an offset of 25. I'm going to launch the polyline command again. When we launch this command, it would be real nice if it was asking me for station offset. Unfortunately, that's not an option in the traditional AutoCAD sense, but using this transparent tool, I can come over and click this one, represents station offset. So now within the polyline command or any command really, it's going to ask me to specify alignment first. I'll click that. And now I can enter stations and offsets. The station, I can free pick this on screen, which is nice if you want to grab things like a property corner or graphics. Or if you know the station, you can just type it in. I'm going to type zero in this case. Now it wants to know the offset. Positive numbers are to the right. Negative numbers are to the left. You can see that at the cursor. I'm going to start 25 foot offset and I'll press enter. I can go to my next point, maybe we'll go to station 100, and an offset of 50, enter. I can go to maybe station 200 with an offset of 25. So very quickly, just by typing station and offset, I can create geometry adjacent to this alignment. If you look down at the command line, you can see there are some sub-options to this command, lock station and lock offset. These are nice if you want to create multiple segments that share a common offset or share a common station. This way you don't have to type those things in over and over again. I believe these commands have been around for a few years. Likely you will have these even if you're using an older version of Civil 3D. I can tell you in 2019.2 and above, it's now showing up in this contextual ribbon. It kind of puts a graphical spin on those settings. When I'm finished, I'll press Escape to exit out of the transparent command. I'll press Escape again to cancel out of the polyline command. This geometry I created could represent bottom of a retaining wall. It could represent a target that I'm going to use for my corridor. I could use this command to insert structures at stations and offsets along my alignment. Remember, these tools can apply to virtually any command. That's what makes them so powerful. Let's pan this over. In addition to snapping to locations along an alignment, I can also snap to many locations within a profile view. Let's look at some of those transparent commands. On screen, I've got a surface called EG Composite. I've got an alignment here called Randall Road. And down below, I pulled a surface profile through that surface. Maybe I'd like to create a finished grade profile. To do that, I'm going to select the profile grid, and then I'll come up and from the launch pad, I'll choose Profile Creation Tools, kind of a shortcut to get there. I will keep the defaults here and I'll click OK. And then in the toolbar, I'm not going to do anything fancy. I'm just going to use the tangents without curves option. I just want to draw it to PVIs for right now. Let's start. I'll snap to the beginning of my alignment here. And now you can see I'm in the traditional, you know, layout geometry command here. I could use the tools here if I want to, or I could pick points on screen. 
Maybe I would like to insert station and elevation. Fortunately, there's a transparent command that will allow me to do that right here. If I click this, it will say, okay, what profile view are you using? I'll click the profile view, and now you can see that I can snap to a station just by clicking it on screen using this jig if I want to do it graphically, or I can type it in. I'm going to go to station 300, and then I get a jig where I can select the elevation. I can pick that graphically, or I can enter it. I'm just going to type 862 for this example. Same as before, you can see I remain in that transparent command. I can do another station and elevation if I want. In this case, though, I'm going to press Escape to cancel out of that transparent command. And let's look at another one. Using this tool, I can draw at a grade to a specific station. I'm going to select that. Let's say from this point, I'd like to come out at negative 3%. You can see that down at the command line. I just type negative 3 and press Enter. I am now locked at that grade. And I'm going to take this down to a station. I can type that in or pick it on screen. I'm just going to type in the station 600 and I'll press enter. And from here I can do grade station over and over again, or I can press escape and we can look at another option. Using this transparent command, I can draw at a grade to a specific elevation. I'm going to select that one. We'll say from this point, maybe I'd like to come out at negative 4%, enter. I'm locked at that grade now, and I want to take this to an elevation. I'll type 843 and I'll press enter and I can do grade elevation from this point on, or I could press escape and we can look at another. This tool allows me to draw at a grade for a specific length. I'll select this one. Maybe from this point, I'd like to come out at a grade of 2%, so we're going up for a length of 100 feet. I'll type 100 and press enter. I will then press escape to get out of that transparent command. So I'm still in the tool. I can pick additional points if I want to. Let me mention that when I first started using Civil 3D, these were the primary go-to transparent commands that I used when I was working in a profile view. These work phenomenal for being able to create geometry in this location. There are actually three more transparent commands that work in the profile view. There are these three up above. They provide additional functionality. We talked about station elevation. If I use this option, this is also station and elevation, but it lets me pick the station from the plan view. We'll look at that as an example. I've got a proposed culvert underneath the road here. Maybe I need to create a PVI over that culvert at an elevation of 850. I'm going to come over here and click profile station from plan. And you can see still wants a station, but it's allowing me to pick it graphically up here, which works well because I don't know the station where that pipe crosses. I am going to bring up my object snaps and I'll say intersection of that crossing. And then if I come down here, you can see it found that location and I want the elevation. I could pick it on screen or I could type it in. We said 850, so I'll type 850 and press enter. And now it will let me pick another station from the plan view. So maybe I'd want to set a low point PVI such that it aligns with a property corner to ensure that I don't have an inlet ending up in somebody's driveway or something like that. The possibilities are endless with these tools. I'm going to press escape and this takes me right back into the command and we'll look at another transparent tool. This one is also station elevation, except this one will grab the elevation from a surface and it will allow me to select the station graphically on screen. I'm going to use this option and it's asking me at the command line, select a surface. That's going to define my elevation. I'll go ahead and pick the existing ground surface for this example. And then it wants me to pick a station from the plan view. Now I can pick it or I can type it in. I don't have a specific graphical item here I want to click on, so I'm just going to type in station 1400, and I'll press enter, and you can see how it drew right to that location. When I'm finished, I'll press escape, and then I'll press escape one more time to get out of this command. So you can see we've created this geometry using many of the tools, many of the snaps that are available here in the transparent commands list. I did it for creating geometry, but remember you can use this if you're editing geometry or querying your drawing, you can use those snaps as well. Let's look at one more. There is another station elevation transparent command here for the profile view. This one will set your station and elevation based on cocoa points. If I zoom in here, you can see maybe the survey crew went out and captured a couple points that represent the swale here at the south end of this culvert. Maybe I would like to connect these points and see what that profile would look like down here in my profile view. There's a bunch of ways I could do this. I could create a feature line and project that over. I could 
create an alignment from these points and then pull a surface profile and then superimpose the profile. Maybe I just quickly want to see this geometry down in the profile view. I'm going to do this with the polyline command because these work with any command. I'll do polyline and then I will come up and say profile view station and elevation from Kogo point. It says grab your profile view. I'm going to click this and now it says click your point objects. I'll click this one and then this one and then this one. When I'm finished, I'll press escape and then escape again to get out of the polyline command. So you can see just by clicking on those, I can very quickly generate that profile here. Just, you know, if I wanted to use that for design purposes or just have a better understanding of where those points fall in my profile. Once again, the opportunities are limitless. You are only limited by your creativity. Let's pan this over. There are also tools in the transparent command toolbar that allow us to replicate geometry, if you will. Here I've got a line segment that's 100 feet long. There is a transparent command called match length. I can use this to steal this length if I want to. As an example, maybe I'm drawing a property line. I'm going to launch my polyline command and we'll start here. And then maybe I want to draw this based on bearing distance. I will then click the quadrants. I'm going to just free pick a bearing here. And you can see now it's asking me for a distance. Anytime the application is asking you for a distance, you can come over and match the length of another object. So essentially I'm using a transparent command within another transparent command. If I click match length, I'll grab this line segment and you can see it creates that line. I can do that with a line segment. I can also do it with the tangent entities within an alignment. Let's do another one here. I'll click the quadrants. I'll set my bearing and then for my length, I'll come over here and say match length and I'll just grab this line segment. I'll press escape a couple times to get out of the command. Once again, trust but verify. Let's go to our line and curve labels and I'll drop a label on each of these just to show that those are 100 feet. So like I said, this will work anytime the application is asking you for a distance. One other option here, if I draw a circle, maybe I'd like the circle to have the same radius as that line segment or as a segment in an alignment. I'll come over and say match. I'll click that line so this circle has a radius of 100. There's another transparent command here that allows us to match a radius. This is now coming full circle where we started. Remember we talked about using the transparent command calculator to fill it, a pair of lines such that they match an arc or a circle. We can do the same thing with the transparent tools. If I launch the fillet command, I can come down and choose radius. Now it wants to know what radius. I'm going to come over and choose match radius. I will then select a circle or I could click the arc segments of an alignment to pull the radius. And then once the radius has been set, I can click a pair of lines to apply that fillet. Okay, let's talk a little bit now about 2019.2 and above. See, the transparent commands have been with us since the beginning. Unfortunately, they're not the most discoverable thing in, in the world. They're kind of tucked over here on the right side of the screen. Unless you really know that they're there, most people don't have a tendency to go over there and find them. So in 2019.2, the transparent commands got a facelift to make them a little bit easier to find. As an example, I'm just going to launch the polyline command here again. When you're in a command, any command, if you right click, you will now find the transparent commands available in the right click menu. So you can grab them from here. Let me press escape a couple times to get out of that. Likewise, if you're in a command, there is a new transparent ribbon tab. If I click this, I can now access all of the transparent commands at the top of the screen. Here they've got nice graphics and nice descriptions next to each one. We don't have to worry about waiting for the rollover tooltip to see which one we're clicking on. Let's press escape. I'm checking here. We're coming up at the top of the hour. Let me mention this guy down here, Profile Toolset. This is also new to 2019.2 and above. Let me demonstrate that. I'm going to eliminate this profile that we made earlier. I'm going to select the profile view and I'll go to profile view properties. And here on the profiles tab, I'm just going to turn that one off so we don't see it. Let's say I wanted to create some of that geometry over again. I'm going to click my profile view and I'll choose profile creation tools. And in my toolbar there, I would like to start here at the beginning. And then here on the transparent tools, I'm going to come down to profile tool set. Let me mention right away that we don't get additional functionality by going here. Essentially, this is putting a graphical interface on several of those tools that we looked at before. 
station elevation, grade to elevation, grade to station. From here, I'm going to choose Profile Tool Set. When I do, it will split the screen, allowing me to see both my plan and profile at the same time. Right now, they're side by side. You can change the view configuration by clicking this button right here. And I can say maybe I'd like the screen to be split horizontal. I could change the horizontal split. Right now it's 50% right down the middle, but that's changeable. I can also determine where the alignment and profile are. Right now the alignment will be at the top, profile at the bottom. Let me click OK. And that took me out of the command. So let me come back up here and I'll click this again. And I'm going to start down here at the end point. Notice in the toolbar, I can select my profile view here. I can also enter station, elevation, grade, and length. If you remember, we went to station 300. I'll type 300 and hit enter. And I went to elevation 862. When I hit enter, you can see how that's handled down in the profile view. From here, I went at a grade of negative 3%. I'll type negative 3 and press enter. And I did that to station 600. And then I went a grade of negative four, and I took that to elevation 843. So you get the idea. Like I said, it's, it's not adding functionality to what we already saw, but it's putting a more graphical spin on it. At this point, when I'm finished, I can come down and click the close button to return to Civil 3D. Okay, let me close this. We have certainly not talked about every tool that's available here in the transparent commands. We've also not talked about every situation where these tools might come in handy. I would strongly encourage you, if you've not used this feature before, to go back and explore it. If you'd like more information about transparent commands, you can open up the help documentation. From here, we'll type using transparent commands. This will give us a hyperlink. When I select this, you will find a hyperlink representing every one of the transparent commands. And if you click this, it will give you a description of what that tool does, as well as a workflow explaining how it's used. So if you'd like more information, that's where you can find it. All right, knowing that, let me jump back over here. Today we talked about the concept of transparent commands. and. Transparent commands have been in the AutoCAD application forever. You can see that Civil 3D includes a ton of transparent tools that act a lot like object snaps for the most part. That's the way I look at them that allow us to snap to points that would be applicable to civil engineering work. We can find them on the right side of the screen if you're using an older version of Civil 3D. If you're using a newer version, you can find them in the right-click menu or in the transparent ribbon tab. We walked through some examples of how they can be used to snap to locations relative to the coordinate system, point objects, alignment objects, and profile views. We kind of talked about some of the updates available in 2019.2, and right at the end there, I showed you where you can get more information in the help documentation. Once again, if you've not looked at these, I would strongly encourage you to jump into them. Very powerful tools, easy to use, and they're also well documented. Okay, with that, I am going to ask Jerry and Dana if there are any questions that have gone unanswered at this point. There are a couple of them, but we can get to them. We'll follow up. Okay. Fantastic. We are right at the top of the hour. We're five seconds from the end here. We always promise to end on time. So we will get back to those who have questions. On behalf of Jerry and Dana, I just want to say thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate your time and we'll see you guys again in a couple of weeks.